Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug and welcome back to another chemistry video. Now in this series, we're going to be learning about quantities of substances and how we can calculate and work with those numbers. If you like this kind of content, consider giving me a thumbs up, a like, I would really appreciate that. And if you really enjoy and learn something from these videos, then consider subscribing. I would really appreciate that. Now, as we talk about quantities of substances, we need to realize that the unit that we use to talk about large quantities of very small particles is the mole. Now, in chemistry, one mole is approximately this many objects. Now, if you're counting the zeros here and counting what to write down, this is 602 followed by 21 zeros. Now, we might read that as 602 sextillion if you're looking to read that number in uh, that type of format, or it might be more convenient to consider this in scientific notation. So in scientific notation, we'd probably write this as about 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Some people like to add another significant figure. It would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Now this is basically just a number of particles in a mole. Now this is a very important number to us in chemistry. We call this Avogadro's number, or sometimes called Avogadro's constant, named after an Italian scientist named Amadeo Avogadro, who did a lot of important work that led to the discovery of this number. When we think about this number, some students get a little bit intimidated or perhaps are a little scared of, of working with this number and the mole concept. Remember, this is just a number that we use that's convenient for us to talk about a large number of very, very tiny particles. For example, in your everyday life, you use specialized units that are used for certain things. For example, if you go to the grocery store and you buy eggs, normally we don't just go to the grocery store and buy one egg. That would probably not be what you would do. Most people buy eggs by a certain unit. There's this unit called the dozen, and that would be 12 eggs. That's just a unit that's convenient for counting eggs. Likewise, if you need to buy some paper for a printer or for a copier, you probably would not go to an office supply store and say, I'd like to buy one sheet of paper. That's not normally how it's done. We buy them by the package, and that package is called a ream. One ream of paper has 500 sheets in it, and that's just a convenient unit that we use to count that specific object or that specific item. Well, a mole is like that as well. We don't use the ream or the dozen to count atoms or ions or uh, molecules. We use the mole. One mole is just 602 sextillion little teeny tiny particles like atoms or molecules or ions or what have you. Now, let's take a, a few moments to think about how large that number is, because sometimes we find it a little bit difficult to comprehend how big 602 sextillion is. Imagine that you had 602 sextillion grains of rice. Now, when we think about how tiny grains of rice are and how big this number is, some people might think you might need a very large room or a very large warehouse to hold that many grains of rice. As it turns out, you would need even more than that. In fact, 602 sextillion grains of rice would fill all the land area in the whole world to a depth of almost 80 meters. And so we're talking about a huge amount of grains of rice. One mole of rice grains is more than the number of grains of all grains that have been grown since the beginning of time. And so this is a huge number. Now, by comparison, what if we had one mole or 602 sextillion molecules of water? How much water would that be? Is that more than all the water in all the oceans? Or is that enough to flood a room? Well, as it turns out, one mole, 602 sextillion molecules of water, is actually about this much right here that I have in this little tiny glass. It's about 18 milliliters of water. 
So think about that. That little thought exercise hopefully helps us to realize how large this number is. 602 sextillion is an unimaginably large number. But at the same time, this should also help us to appreciate how unimaginably tiny atoms and molecules are as well. Now, we can use this number to make some conversions. We can say that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, if we're talking about an element, or uh, molecules, if we're talking about a compound, ions, some other teeny tiny particle. Let's solve this problem here. So to solve this problem, we're going to use dimensional analysis, just like we learned earlier in this course. I'm gonna start by writing down what's given to me, the 8.62 times 10 to the 24th atoms, and then way down here at the end, since I'm converting to moles, I'm gonna write moles, because I know that's my goal, that's what I'm trying to convert to. So in my conversion factor, it looks like atoms will need to go on the bottom because that's what's going to cancel with the atoms up here on top eventually. And then since I'm converting to moles, mole needs to go on the top of my conversion factor. Now we just learned that one mole is the equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So I'm going to fill those numbers into the conversion factor. Remember, in any conversion factor, it doesn't matter what it is, the numerator has to be equivalent to the value in the denominator in order for it to work. So since one mole is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, that's, that's a good conversion factor. Now I can cancel atoms, top and bottom, just like this, and then I can divide on my calculator. So 8.62, times 10 to the 24th divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is equal to 14.3. So this quantity is equal to 14.3 moles of iron. I would recommend that you work the problems along with me using your own scientific calculator because sometimes one thing I've found is one of the most common mistakes that students will make will be calculation errors. They'll forget how to use their calculator on these scientific notation problems. So make sure that you can do that so you don't lose points on that in your chemistry class. Let's try another example here. In this next example, we're going to convert 0.39 moles of water to molecules. So once again, the same type of setup here. I'm going to start by writing 0.39 moles on my paper here. And since I'm converting to molecules way down here at the end, I'm going to have uh, molecules down here at the end of the problem. And in my conversion factor, since I'm starting with moles this time, the moles need to be on the bottom, so it'll cancel. And since I'm converting to molecules, molecules will need to be on the top. And like we said, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, or any other little teeny tiny particle, in one mole of a substance. So I can cancel moles, top and bottom, just like this. And on my calculator, I can take 0.39 moles and multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And I find that my answer is 2.3 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So that's how you solve a problem like this. Now this is all very good to count molecules by converting with moles and all this. However, we have to remember that most of the time in the laboratory, we're not really interested in counting individual atoms and molecules. It's not really practical to do that most of the time. However, one thing that might be a bit more practical for us is to know what is the volume of one mole. Now volume is normally measured in liters in the chemistry lab. Well, as it turns out, one mole is equal to 22.4 liters of a gas. Now we know that gases can be compressed, they can expand, different gases can have different volumes depending upon the pressure and the temperature, so we have to stipulate that one mole is only equal to 22.4 liters if it's a gas at zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. So only at those conditions. Now we give those conditions a name. Those are called standard temperature and pressure. 
So anytime we're at zero degrees Celsius in one atmosphere of pressure, we call that standard temperature and pressure. Sometimes that's abbreviated STP. So sometimes you might see on a homework assignment or on a test, it might say convert from a certain number of moles to liters at STP. That's talking about standard temperature and pressure. Now, let's try a couple of examples with this. Let's say we have a question like this. How many liters are in 12.6 moles of argon gas at STP? standard temperature and pressure. Well, once again, just like in any uh, typical uh, conversion problem, we're going to start by writing down what's given to us, the 12.6 moles. And since we're converting to uh, liters down here at the end, I'm going to put liters. And so to solve this in my conversion factor, I'm going to put moles on the bottom. Since I'm starting with moles, I need to have moles on the bottom so it'll cancel. And since I'm converting to liters, I need to have liters on the top like this. Now, we can fill in some numbers. We said that there are 22.4 liters in one mole of gas at these conditions. So now I can cancel moles top and bottom just like that. And on my calculator, I'll take 12.6 times 22.4 and I'll find that the answer is about 282 liters. So that's the volume of 12.6 moles of argon at STP. Let's try one more example here. If we have 2.67 moles of water vapor in a container at STP, what is the container's volume? So once again, we're starting with 2.67 moles, so I write that down. And the question is, what's the volume? So at the end, I'm going to write liters. Now, just so you know, you are expected to know that volume is going to be calculated in liters. I wanted to ask the question that way because sometimes students who are starting out in chemistry will see volume and they don't understand that that means liters. Okay, That's something that you need to know, that the function of volume is measured in liters. So make sure that you understand that. Now in our conversion factor, since we're starting with moles, I'm going to put moles on the denominator of our uh, conversion factor here, so it'll cancel. And since we're converting to liters, I need to have liters on the top. So now I can fill in some numbers that go along with these units. So we know that there are 22.4 liters in one mole of gas at STP. So now I can cancel moles top and bottom, just like this. And on my calculator, I'll take 2.67 times 22.4, and I find that the answer is about 59.8 liters. And so that's the volume of this amount of water vapor. So as you're working through these problems, sometimes students are wondering how many significant figures should you have in the answer? Well, my recommendation is look at the number of significant figures in the question, and that's how many significant figures you should most likely have in the answer. So we have 2.67 here. That's three significant figures in the question. The answer will have three. If we had only had two significant figures in the question, we'd have two in the answer. Now, we do have to realize that 22.4 only has three significant figures. And so that's kind of a limiting factor in a, a question like this. Likewise, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd only has three significant figures in it. So that's kind of a limiting factor for a question like this. Hey, I hope you learned something about moles and Avogadro's number and STP and uh, how to do these simple mole conversions. If you learned something from this video, please smash that thumbs up button. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to measure the mass of a mole, something that might even be even more practical than this. I hope to see you in that next video. I'll see you soon.